Okay, so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to take you through uh, a, a brief synopsis history of CMCC1 so I can set the uh, preface for legacy. Um, up on your screen, you should see a CAB1 and a, and a Lino Powermaster. Uh, back in roughly 1995, we released the uh, TMCC1 CAB1 remote and the Powermaster. Um, the CAB1 itself communicates from its antenna at 27 megahertz. And at the time it was introduced, the only thing released was the Powermaster, which basically took your, it was your interface between your power supply and your track and basically gave you the ability to control trains conventionally by increasing and decreasing track power and uh, direction button, whistle bell, boost and break, and that's pretty much about it. Um, then later on in 1996, we ended up releasing the command base. And then the command base, of course, took us to the next level of true command control, which was uh, with the handheld remote Speaking directly to the command base, it allows you to send signals directly to the trains as opposed to controlling the track power. So from a conventional environment, you can control track power. In a command control environment, you can control the trains directly. So TMCC1, TMCC1 base was released, and then that's when, uh, I think just prior to that base coming out, we were shipping command controlled locomotives. Um, I'm sure all of you are well aware of what a TMCC-1 locomotive does. It was basically on the market from 96 to about 2000, uh, 2008, 2009 when uh, Legacy was introduced. Um, one thing that's important to note is that the TMCC-1 system, the cab and the base, was only ever capable of sending out 8-bit commands. And that will become important as we get into Legacy here shortly. So. Cab 1 communicated with the power master and the base at 27 megahertz. And then the signal that went out to the track into the locomotives or received by the locomotives was 455 kilohertz. As the system uh, continued to grow, we started to release devices such as the SC1 and then later on the SC2. Those were um, stationary devices that allowed you to control switches and accessories. As if you follow the red lines on the screen, the cab one at 27 megahertz talks to the base on the top, which in turn sends that 455 kilohertz signal out to the locomotives on the track. The cab one also communicates at 27 megahertz to the power master, which just varies the track power for conventional control. And then the command base itself at 455 kilohertz would then send the signal to the SC1 and the SC2. After, those, uh, after the SC1 was out for a while, IC Controls came along and started making the, uh, the line that we ended up buying up, which is, uh, I refer to it as the ASC TPC series of devices. You can call it the acronym, the acronym line if you'd like. Um, basically, the communication here was all based off of a uh, data and common line on this computer port. Uh, just so everyone's aware, the red wire communicates uh, plus 5 volts and the green wire is the ground, just uh, basically communicates in ones and zeros. So the, ca the cab one talks to the base, the base through the computer port would then talk to all the various devices, the accessory switch controller, block power controller, operating track controller, AMC, TPCs, etc. Um, and then the, the communication daisy chains. The reason I'm bringing all of this up is because this uh, eventually applies to uh, what we're doing with uh, Legacy and LCS. So roughly about 2008, Lionel announces the release of Legacy, and we start to have two different types of locomotives in the marketplace. We have TMCC1 locomotives, and we have Legacy locomotives, or oftentimes referred to as TMCC2. So TMCC1 locomotives only accept 8-bit commands. Legacy locomotives accept 9-bit commands to operate in legacy mode or 8-bit commands to operate in TMCC1 mode. When we introduced legacy, we brought upon a philosophy called no train left behind. No train left behind basically means that 
everything that we had made prior to the introduction of Legacy was still 100% compatible with Legacy. That includes all of the ASC TPC series devices, uh, Power Masters, TMCC1 locomotives, as well as conventional locomotives. So Legacy comes onto the scene in roughly 2008, 2007, 2008 timeframe. Legacy comes into being. And Legacy is capable of sending 8-bit and 9-bit commands to the locomotives. That one bit of data is the difference between what a TMCC-1 locomotive did and everything that a Legacy locomotive does today. 200 speed steps versus 32 speed steps, quilling horn versus single, single chime horn or single note horn, um, all of the preset railroad speed steps, the building of lash ups, routes, tracks, etc. Uh, all by one bit of data with the legacy system. As you all know, the TMC1 system that we had started releasing in 95, 96, that has since been discontinued. I think we made that announcement somewhere around the 2010, 2011 timeframe where we announced the discontinuation of, of TMCC and everything went to legacy. So upon the introduction of legacy, we wanted to make sure that we stayed consistent with the no train left behind theory. So we made it, a, we made it available that you could use your train master system and your legacy system in conjunction. And to accomplish this, you use the Y cable that comes with the legacy set. So basically your TMCC1 command base would be connected to your legacy base through the Y cable. The command base would be connected to the outside rail. And the cab one would would still be allowed to be used, could still be used, but the CAV1 talks directly to the train master command base, the TMCC1 base. It sends the data to the legacy base. The legacy base in turn sends a signal out to the locomotives on the layout. The legacy remote would then send the signal to the legacy base out to the locomotive. So it, in this configuration, it's truly possible to have the same engine on the track, say engine 17, that is a legacy locomotive, using your legacy remote in the legacy mode, you could quill the horn on engine 17 with your legacy remote, whereas you would only get whatever horn the cab one would give you, because cab one is only sending 8-bit commands, whereas the legacy remote is sending a 9-bit command to the same locomotive at the same, on the same track simultaneously. 